What's up people? Today we are going to talk about this 2015 Yamaha FZ07 that I find myself riding at the moment. So I've had this bike for a little over a year, maybe two years at this point. It's been a great bike so far. So, little history, I'm coming off of uh, a series of sport bikes, uh, four cylinder sport bikes. So I've had a CBR 600 F4 and two Kawasaki 636s. So I have that experience of riding, you know, a 600 bike, which is an entry level sport bike. So when I was looking at, you know, I moved here to LA and wanted something that was maybe a bit more nimble for traffic. So I've got this uh, naked style standard setup FZ07. Right? So it's a bit more of an upright position, no fairings, and it had you have more low speed control uh, because of your because of your position and the grip position it's a little bit wider grip setup so you get more leverage at low speeds that makes you more nimble in my mind i was thinking all right i'm used to the speed of a 600 probably time for a little bit bigger bike at this point i've been riding for i don't know over 10 years so i said okay i'll get the fd07 took it for a quick test ride and that was it what I've realized since is that while the FZ07 is an incredible bike, the Parallel Twin delivers power much differently than the inline fours that I was coming off of. So the experience has been very different. So the Parallel Twin on this bike has a lot more low end thump, right? a lot more torque at the bottom end, but it falls off around seven, 8,000 RPMs. And the top speed is obviously a lot lower because you have no fairings and you have less top end in the motor. All those things combined make for a spectacular city bike. Right? You have tons of torque coming off of red lights and getting through traffic and obviously more than enough power on the highway at speed. But it has left me lacking a little bit of that wow factor once you get beyond 70 80 miles an hour right this is a 120 130 mile per hour bike maybe right like tops which listen that's far below or far below far above the speed limit in any reasonable or recommended speed you should go but you know if you want to open it up, there's only so far as you can go with this bike, right? And it does fall off at the certain RPM range. So it has a little bit of a lackluster feel if you're expecting massive speed and power through the mid to top end or mid to higher range RPM. Like, you just passed me. You knew I was there. What are we doing? Well, that's why she has no front end on her car. Anyway. So the top end speed and power delivery aside. I am very fond of this bike. Right? And, and there's a number of reasons why. Right? And it touched on them all a, a, a bit. But the first is, you know, they sound great. the parallel twin there's something about the twin setup that i really like that kind of thumping sound they say that we like the sound better like you think of a harley or something like that because that two resonates with our heartbeat in a certain way that we relate to now whether or not that's true i don't know but i will say that i really like the sound of the bike so maybe it is true short stop there what the fuck like, did it just turn 
red then right back to green why bother going to red i don't get it so i love the sound i'm running an akropovic exhaust some people say akrobovich i don't know what the proper way to say it is i'm gonna go with akropovic because that's how i've always said it somebody correct me if i'm wrong that's what has this phenomenal sound which is i think really important for getting around traffic you know there's people say oh i love the electric bikes and all that but uh there is a, some safety value with having an exhaust that being said the bike is really nimble right it's, it's a narrow bike easy to cut through traffic with or cut through the butter lots of low end low end power so it's creates a really fun and exhilarating experience around the city and in the canyons it's great uh, it's comfortable enough well i'll say that it's very comfortable the seating position is very natural kind of this upright seating position so it's good for longer trips if you have to commute i will say that there isn't a ton of storage underneath the rear seat but I mean, I'm coming off a couple, of, well, a few sport bikes. I didn't really have any expectation of storage space, so that's kind of a moot point. But, you know, I would like to have a little bit more space to put pencils or something in. And, uh, again, I don't know why you would carry pencils in your undertow. Oh, well, all right, so I'm uh, a designer. Maybe I would want to color somewhere along the road. You know, I don't know, whatever. All these things considered, uh, this bike has been great. It's a really great entry-level bike for somebody that has, well, I wouldn't say entry-level bike, but for somebody that has a little bit of experience, uh, the power won't overwhelm you if you have uh, enough, enough control or enough experience. You know, I, I will say that this bike is great for like a, a mid-level rider if you will right somebody that has a little bit experience or a little bit of experience but not these crazy expectations of power and performance right it's super reliable i've never knock on wood never had an issue with the bike i just replaced the battery but that's standard maintenance so it's been a really great piece to have in the arsenal and it's a perfect daily rider. Price point, you know, I think one of these new at the moment is around between seven or eight thousand dollars, right? So it's relatively affordable. It's just a turnkey play for mile after mile with n nothing to really worry about. So it's been a great experience that way and exactly what I've needed to get around in this city since I don't own a car. Right, so I need something that's reliable, something that I can count on. So all the talk about you know lack of power at the top end and that type of thing kind of goes away and becomes irrelevant when we talk about I use this bike as a daily rider. I don't own a vehicle and I can count on this bike to get me where I'm going day in and day out. Right, so kudos to Yamaha, they've created a, a spectacular bike. And from a design standpoint, it looks good. They have really, uh, they have great colorways available. Both right, this is a 2015, but the new ones as well. Great colorways, kind of nice combination of toned down colors with colors that pop. Right, so you've got like a gray with a neon green and uh, purples and this type of thing. So they've really done a nice job from a graphic standpoint. Uh, and the form language is nice. It's a masculine bike. It looks good. Yeah. You can feel good riding a bike like this and you can pull up anywhere and you're not gonna have somebody tell you, oh, that's a chick's bike, you know? Really designed well, cool details. I would buy another one, right? Honestly, I would buy another one. I might go for the new MT-09 or the MT-10, but I would stay with this MT or FZ as it was known family. All right, so on a scale of one to 10, I would give the Yamaha FZ07 a solid eight out of 10. Now, I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10, 
Ooh, oh, on trailer life, what happened? Back to what I was saying. So I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10 because but it doesn't necessarily meet my top end power expectation, right? Anything beyond 7,000 RPMs, it's pretty much, you know, it just falls off. So I did expect it to have a little bit more oomph in the higher RPM range. From a design standpoint, I think it holds up really well against the rest of this field for this segment. I will say that KTM has come in with some pretty hot product that competes in this segment with the, the Super Duke series. Uh, the I can't even pronounce the word, but look up some of KTM's newer models. In this range, design language uh, and the aesthetics are very strong with that line. So the Yamaha takes a half step back in relation to those others from a design standpoint. That being said, this bike does look great. And price point, it's affordable. Right, so all those things kind of added together and you know I'll have to get some more concrete like metrics down or matrices I don't know what the plural of metrics are and maybe we'll do some more design reviews with with some other bikes with some standard categories to judge them on or base them on but for now I'm winging it so that's what I got Listen, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, definitely reach out, leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on your notifications as well. Right? I will be posting every Thursday. That I think that's going to be a comfortable cadence. Uh, let me know if that works for you, but turn your notifications on so you can be updated whenever the new videos come out. And again, if there's anything that you want to see, any bikes that you'd like me to review, whether it's from a design standpoint or performance, that whatever, just give me some input and i'm happy to to share what knowledge i have with you uh, and look forward to learning together and yeah let's get after it talk to you guys soon have a great weekend peace but i really do love the way this bike sounds though